So guys, just like that, we are here in week 11. Um, each year, the end of the regular season is rife with developments. Uh, you got you have teams playing for district championships. You have teams playing for playoff seating, some for playoff spots. Um, so, you know, there's always a lot of things going on, a lot of, a lot of factors. So let's get into a few of those. Uh, first, here's a very <clears throat> interesting district championship battle, <clears throat> excuse me, that we probably would have never predicted at the start of the season, and that is Belton at University. Um, now, Elgin is also still in the mix in that district in terms of uh, they could work their way into a, a share of the district title, and then it would come down to tiebreakers. But um, certainly with a win, uh, University is assured of no less than a, than a share of the title. <clears throat> um, so we've talked about how much a playoff spot would mean to University this year. But a district title, that's like next level stuff. You know, they were 0 and 10 next, last year. To go from worst to first, uh, that's a big deal. Um, so, beyond the consideration that Kent Laster would get for Super Syntex Coach of the Year, I'm, I know that we would consider him in that, uh, in that area. Do you think that, you know, if he did that, he might get some statewide attention? DJ, what do you say? Uh, I don't see why he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, last year they were 0-10, and this year they're contending for a district title. They've got their first playoff. I was actually on the phone with Kent Laster this morning, and um, I, I think he said that the last time they clinched a share was 1996, mm. and like 1950-something for an outright mm. title. So it's been a while, and I think the community would really uh, – you know, be excited about that. And um, I, I, I think, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't get statewide attention, uh, especially with how he's gotten all of the, uh, his players to really buy in and um, play, play well this year. Yeah. Chad? You know, not to put um, too much pressure on them at this point, because they've, they've had such a great season and, and it's, it's worthy of acknowledgement no matter what they do the rest of the way, but, you know, a win against Belton um, or either way, a win in your first playoff game for university. Um, I, I think that if people around the state didn't acknowledge it and didn't look at it, they'd really be missing out on something because you've got university, a university program that didn't win a game last year. And you go from not winning a game to getting in the playoffs and winning a game. Um, and then, and then you look at the, uh, you look at the big picture of um, when they were last good and, and you get a chance to shine a light on Leroy Coleman and what he did, you know, and of course we lost him this year and, mm. and um, you know, to kind of bring in Leroy Coleman into the picture a little bit, just for, the sake of storytelling and then, and then highlight what Kent Laster is. And I think it's just a fantastic story that, uh, that should have statewide recognition. Well, uh, <laughs> DJ's notes about, you know, when the last time was, that's, that's pretty incredible because, uh, you know, 96 for a share in 1950, what? I'm not really sure what it was sometime in the 1950s. <clears throat> okay. I mean, that's, that's a long time. <laughs> um, and as Chad said, of course, 96, Leroy Coleman was coaching them. Uh, was Ladanian still there at 96? That might be. That was, that was Ladanian senior year. Yeah, Ladanian senior year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you're talking about some some legendary U university Trojan there. Uh, and that's what I mean. I mean, just the, the chance to highlight that. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I do feel like if he got some statewide attention, it would probably be from uh, people like Dave Campbell's Texas football. Um, I'll just, you know, this is going a little deep here, but uh, on the Texas sports writers, all state team, they have a, a coach of the year for each classification as well. And usually on that one, and, and this is no knock on uh, our, our colleague, Robert Cessna at the Brian Eagle, who has a thankless job in compiling all the nominations for that Texas sports writer team. Uh, we've done the super syntax nominations before. That's just for our area. I can't even fathom 
doing mm-hmm. the entire freaking state. Uh, anyway, all that to say, usually that all state voting comes down to uh, like four guys, and it's the the two coaches who coached in the let's say the 5a division one state championship game and the two coaches who coached in the 5a division two state championship game and i feel like in that case the all-state team is missing the boat a little bit on what makes a good coach of the year candidate because well we got it we got to see about that this year because we get to that point i'll just say this if university is playing thanksgiving week Uh uh-huh and he's not a nominee and he doesn't win it they've done it wrong all right. Well, we can certainly. Uh, it's not like we don't have uh, Robert Cessna's nomination. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, we can certainly uh, make that case for him.